Let's work together to inspire communities of song that sing together for the joy of doing it and to the glory of God. The organist as conductor. Every time we prepare to play for a setting of congregational song, we have to think as a conductor, we have to prepare as a conductor, we have to act as a conductor. And that's especially true if you are leading from the organ without a conductor in front of the congregation to give them visual cues. All of your cues then become oral cues and they're very, very important. So you're going to prepare as a conductor. Every great conductor starts with their score. They study their score. So as you're studying your score, ask yourself these questions. What's the origin of this hymn or song that I'm preparing? A great clue comes from the bottom of the page. So that'll often tell you not only who composed the music, but also what era they lived within. And you can go from there in researching that person. Then ask yourself, okay, I know where this hymn or song comes from, but where does it now belong? Where does it fit in the tradition of singing in my denomination? How familiar is it to my congregation? If it's very familiar, that frees you to do all sorts of things. If it's very unfamiliar, that frees you to think about your congregation in how you prepare. What is going to help them be most successful in their singing of this hymn or song? Another question, what is the natural pace of the singing of this text? The text will give you clues for mood and also for pace but only if you've prepared. You have to look at that text. How fast can it go? And how fast can my congregation sing this text? It's going to be a different answer based on the familiar, unfamiliar question that preceded this one. Also, what is the acoustic? The acoustic in which I'm preparing this workshop is a very live acoustic. It's gorgeous for singing but it insists that I go a little bit slower just to let those sounds dissipate as they do in this acoustic. In a drier acoustic, I can go a bit faster. And then what is the expectation or the tradition of my congregation? I'll tell you later about a great experience that I had with a congregation in Wales that taught me the right tempo for the hymn tune Kumranda. So you need to know local customs. You need to know, no matter what you think about how this should go, you have to be aware of the place where you are and the place where this piece comes from. The next thing is have a plan. Mark it in your score. Here's a score of a hymn that I prepared and it's not special in any way. I mark up my hymns this way. I mark in everything that I'm going to do, especially if I'm in an unfamiliar situation or with an unfamiliar organ. You might need to mark in every note of an improvisation, every note of a transposition. Whatever you need to be successful, mark it in your score. So what I do is I make Xerox copies of the hymns in my worship services so that I can put them all in order in a notebook. I try to be environmentally sensitive in that I keep those copies in a separate notebook. So I have kind of the Jan Craybill notebook for my congregational hymnal. And I go back to those marked up scores. And sometimes I use the same markings, sometimes I erase those and come up with something different because the congregation knows the hymn better or because I want to interpret it differently for this particular setting. So what I mark in my score is the mood that I'm trying to project, any adjustments I'm going to make for reasons of text or mood or drama, 
I always mark the space that I'm going to leave at the end of stanzas. That is something that I can forget and it's very important that you be consistent there. And then I mark the taktus. I mark what division of the beat I am going to concentrate on. We'll talk more about that a bit later. And then when you play, it's essential that you continue to be a conductor. If you have a conductor in front of your congregation, then it's essential that you and that person work out what you're going to do beforehand. And that it's essential that that person provides strong rhythmic leadership. If you don't have a conductor, I don't, many places don't. I don't believe that's a disadvantage. I believe that that calls us to be different organists, that calls us to be organists as conductors. It's essential that you provide strong, rhythmic, dependable leadership for your congregation. I'll show you a few examples in a moment. And then it's important, like all good conductors, that you react. You react to the fellow musicians around you, every member of your congregation. It's important that you listen to what they're doing. It's important that if they're struggling, you do something to help them, just like a good conductor will give you a very strong cue. You have to provide those strong cues. And if your congregation is singing very well, then as a great conductor, you will encourage them to do more. showed up for a worship service in Wales, prepared to play this Welsh hymn. Thank goodness I had a rehearsal with the choir before we did this in worship, because I was told that the tempo that I was taking was flippant and wrong and even insulting. This is the one true tempo for this hymn, according to my Welsh fellow musicians that day. but I was in the midst of the Welsh. If you've ever heard a Welsh choir sing, you know that they sing with their entire bodies from the tips of their toes to the tops of their heads. It's all involved in music making. And so they can sustain that kind of a tempo. Honestly, my home congregation would not be able to do that. They don't have the breath support. We'll develop that eventually, but right now I need to take a faster tempo when I'm with them, a much slower tempo when I am with my Welsh friends, and somewhere in the middle for most of the other situations that I find myself in. That's what I mean by being a conductor. You have to think about the tempo, you have to think about the taktus. So even when I'm in a slower tempo for this piece, I'm still thinking two strong beats to each bar, not four. Four causes it to be 
ponderous and lethargic. So I'm thinking about strong weak, strong weak in a 4-4 bar, but I'm taking that slower tempo when I'm in certain situations. I have to think as a conductor. <laughs>